Hello there. Welcome to Medical Microbiology. Today we will continue chapter three, the second lecture, which is about microscopes. So this is the picture of microscope with part of microscope. So this part over here uh, is called the head of the microscope. So this is the head. In the head, you see this part. Okay. So this is called the eyepiece. Okay. So in the eyepiece, you see the ocular lens. Okay. See the ocular lens over here. Okay. The ocular lens has power to enlarge object. So the power of the ocular lens is usually 10 times. Okay, so 10 times power. So the ability to enlarge object 10 times bigger than the original size. Okay. And then on the this part okay you see this part okay this is still still part of the head this is what we call the nose piece okay so this is the nose piece because this nose piece can rotate, therefore it's called the resolving nose piece. In the nose piece, you will find usually in the microscope, there are four objective lenses. Okay, there are four objective lenses. I'm going to type over here. Okay, the first one is called the Scanning lens, it has four power. Okay. The second one, that scanning lens is the shortest one. Okay. And then the second one is called the low power. It has 10 time power. And the third one is called the high power objective lens it has 40 times okay and then the last one the longest one is called the oil immersion lens and it has 100 power Okay, so the, there are four objective lenses usually in the nose piece. Scanning lens, four power, low power lens, 10 power, high power lens, 40 time. And then oil immersion power, uh, lens, 100 time. Okay, the next part, okay, over here, the whole part over here is called the uh, arms of the microscope okay and the base okay of the microscope is called the base or sometimes it's called the body of microscope okay, another part of microscope is this flat surface okay. this is what we call the stage okay so the flat surface over here is called the stage and this is the place where we put the slide and the object on that stage you also have what we call the mechanical stage so this 
okay so mechanical state of here so like a clip and when we put the slide in this mechanical state then we can control that slide to the left to the right front or back by controlling this button uh, you maybe you don't see that there is a button over here okay this is the button that used for control the mechanical state so that button is called the mechanical state controller okay and then you will also see the knob over here so there are two knobs actually bigger one okay and the smaller one over here okay the bigger one is called the coarse focus and the smaller one is called the fine focus so when you turn this uh, knob uh, the bigger one for example it will bring the stage up and down so up and down okay? the fine focus also will bring the state up and down but very smooth movement okay so the fine focus also bring the state up and down with a very smooth movement and the last part is this part which is the light source okay so this is the light microsoft using the light as a source for transmission okay. there is also part over here so it's very small you see very small knob over here is called the diaphragm this diaphragm used for open and close the light source so if you want to have a brighter light then you can open the diaphragm if you want to have a dim light then we close the diaphragm so this is the part of the light microscope. The characteristic of microscope, there are two of them, okay, that telling us whether the microscope is good or not. Which is the first one is the magnification, which is the ability to enlarge object. Okay, so every microscope has this ability, but there are different type of microscope. Okay. There are some that are able to enlarge very, very high power. Okay. Like for example, electron microscope, it can enlarge the object until uh, 1 million times. The light microscope usually around 1,000 times, maybe 2,000 times. Okay. That's for the light microscope. The second characteristic is the resolution or the resolving power. And this is the ability to show detail. Better microscope will give you a, bit, uh, a better detail of object, more focus of the object. But cheaper microscope, for example, only give you very low detail, like a mostly blurry object. Okay, so that's the resolution. Magnification, again, this is the ability to enlarge object. Okay. So this magnification is coming from the lens that we use in the microscope. For example, in this light microscope, remember, there are two lens that I use to see the object. The first lens is over here on the eyepiece. It's called the ocular lens. Okay, you still remember the power of ocular lens is 10, mostly 10 times. Okay. And then the second lens is over here in the nose piece. There are again mostly four of them. Okay, four lenses in the nose piece. The scanning lens, scanning lens has power of four times. And okay. the second one is the low power lens. It has ten time power. The next one is high power lens. It has 40 time power. And the last one is the oil immersion lens. It has 100 time power. Okay. So 
So the total magnification or the total enlargement of the object uh, will be multiplication of this power of the ocular lens with one of this objective lens. For example, if you use the scanning lens to see the object, then the total magnification will be 4 times 10. Uh, it will be 40 times. Okay, if using the scanning lens, the total magnification will be 40 times. But if we use the low power, then the total magnification will be 10 times 10, okay, which is 100 times. If we use the high power objective lens, then the total magnification will be 10 times 40, which is 400 times. Okay. If we use the oil immersions, then the total magnification will be 10 times 100, which is 1,000 times. So this is the highest total magnification that we can get from this light microscope. 1,000 time total magnification. Okay, so this is the formula for the total magnification. Also, when we see object through this microscope, the final object that we see on our eyes will be what we call the virtual image. The image is actually opposite of the real image that we put on the slide over here. So the right part of the real image will be on the left side of the virtual image. Okay, The left side will be on the right side of the virtual image. Okay? The top of the real image will be on the bottom part of the virtual image. While the bottom part of this image, real image, will be on the top part of the virtual image. So it's going to be kind of like a mirror image. Okay? So that's what we call the virtual image. The second characteristic of microscope is resolution. Now, what is resolution? the ability to show detail right, of the object that that is enlarged okay so good resolution will be look like this okay so the object will be very clear okay while bad resolution will be look like this the object is blurry actually right? when we see the microscope the object is not clear it's blurry so this is lower resolution Okay. The other one over here is the higher resolution. So this resolution is actually coming from two things, which is the wavelengths of the light that transmitted through the object, so the wavelength. And the second one is the numerical aperture of that light. Okay. Now the rule is the shorter the wavelength and the higher uh, numerical aperture will give a better resolution. Okay. Now, if you see this light spectrum, okay, so you see this is 400, which is short, and this is 700, is longer wavelength. So the light from here, okay, will be better for resolution, like a blue light, for example. It will be better for better resolution. But using the red light on the other side over here, longer wavelength will give lower resolution. Okay, so usually more expensive microscope will be able to transmit more blue light compared to the cheaper microscope. This is the magnification and resolution of the light microscope. Okay, so it can enlarge small object, but it's not that small. Okay, 
it can for example we can use microscope the light microscope to see uh, bacteria for example okay so this is bacteria over here we can see that one okay we can also use to see fungi like yeast okay but we cannot really use this microscope for seeing some viruses because viruses is very small so viruses will be here somewhere okay it will not be able to see using microscope except there are some bigger virus uh, that we still be able to see using the light microscope but most of the virus will not be able to see to be seen under the light microscope okay so outside this will be using the electron microscope because electron microscope can enlarge object into one million times the light microscope only about one thousand time or two thousand times now we go to the type of microscope okay there are two types the first one is called the optical or light microscope so this type of microscope using the light eh, that you know transmitted through the specimen. So using the light source. While the second one is called the electron microscope. This one using electron to transmit the energy through the specimen. Okay, just remember electron has shorter wavelength compared to the light. Therefore, this electron microscope will give more resolution and higher magnification. There are some type or variation in optical microscope. Okay. Mostly the, the one that is used in common laboratory is this one, the first type of here, the bright field light microscope and this is the most type, the type of microscope that mostly used in regular lab so what is bright field mean it means that the the field the environment is or the surrounding is bright or lighter and the object is darker so you see the object is darker and the surrounding will be uh, lighter okay the second type of microscope is uh, light microscope is called dark field. Right? This one is going to be opposite. The object is actually transparent or lighter, but the field or the surrounding is darker. The next type is called the phase contrast. Okay, this will give us several type of transmissions to the object and so you use you will be able to see some structure inside the cell for example or inside the specimen be under the microscope the next one is modification of light microscope using fluorescence source okay so this one using usually uh, ultraviolet source then you will be able to see some shiny okay part of the object if they uh, able to take this fluorescence light and then the last one is called the scanning confocal light microscope this is a very good microscope uh, you can see kind of 3d object using this scanning confocal microscope let's see what you see under the microscope using this uh, five different microscope so under the bright field this is how the specimens look like okay? so the specimen of the object is darker so this is the object darker now dark field the object is actually lighter and the surrounding is really really dark okay? the first contrast you know the from using this light you will be able to see some structure inside the object 
and then fluorescence you will be able to see some shiny yellow color okay on the part of the object that taken this uh, fluorescence light and this is the scanning confocal uh, microscope you see this object is look like a 3d object and so these are different type of light or optical microscope and again remember the bright field is this is actually the cheapest one and this is the one that usually used in regular lab the second type of microscope is the electron microscopy and this microscope is really really expensive because it can enlarge the object up to one million times so we should be able to see very small object using this electron microscope like viruses for example even some molecules like proteins uh, can be also seen using the electron microscope okay. and also the electron microscope has shorter wavelength okay 100,000 times shorter than the light uh, wave therefore it will give better resolution so better magnification or higher magnification and better resolution there are two types of electron microscope. The first one is called the transmission electron microscope or TEM. This is giving us a regular 2D object, okay? regular two dimensions object. The second one is scanning electron microscope or SEM. And this is the one that can give us 3D object so the object is really cool look like a real three dimension object now when we look at the object the specimen we have to prepare that specimen okay there are two type of preparation the first one is called the wet mounts okay, or hanging drops mount this is usually for fresh live object so we use what we call the wet mounts or hanging drop mount this is for live fresh object so you should be able to see the object if it is cell or uh, organism bacteria for example they might moving around okay, with this wet mount uh, preparation the second type of preparation is what we call the fixed mounts it means that the object actually kill using uh, maybe heat or some chemical so the object that we see yeah, using this preparation this prep will be that object yeah, so the, the the object is out, uh, already dead yeah, it's not living object now the light microscope yeah, the light microscope has advantage over the electron microscope because the light microscope able to see for both living object and fixed object. Okay, so that's the advantage of optical microscope. Okay. Now, how about electron microscope? Electron microscope can only be used to see the fixed or dead object. Okay, so only dead object. So electron microscope cannot be used for seeing living uh, specimen. Okay. That's the disadvantage of electron microscope. However, the advantage of electron microscope is it is able to enlarge the object into you know, up to one million times and also will give us better resolution compared to the optical or light microscope I think that's enough for microscopy
we will meet again on the next lecture which is standing technique goodbye now